All right, so what I would like for you to do with your group, pretty please, is find the derivatives of those three functions. So you're gonna find f prime and g prime and h prime. But hey guys, what do you notice? They're all the same and they're all 4x minus 3. Okay, so here is the thing though. We're going to do antiderivatives, which is a derivative except backwards. Okay, actually, let's go ahead and write that down. It's an inverse of a derivative. But here's the thing. When you go backwards, there might be a constant added on to the end. Do you get how the derivatives of each of these were all the same, but the original functions are not the same? Yeah. You could have plus or minus literally any number in the world that's a constant. So when you do antiderivatives, you have to put plus C at the end, C for constant. Okay, so the way that this looks is integral f prime of x dx equals f of x plus c. I'm going to let you write that down, and then I'm going to talk about it for a second. It isn't, and I like doing these. They they turn out, it takes a second, and everybody starts to kind of like catch on, and then we can like flow through them. So do you see how if you did the derivative of this, you would get this answer. So your goal is to come up with a function that if you did the derivative, you would get what's there. It's almost like you have the answer and you're looking for the question. Okay. Now we call these indefinite integrals. And you have to understand the difference. A definite integral has boundaries. You're finding an actual area from two to seven or, you know, whatever it is indefinite does not have boundaries. So you just stick a plus C at the end. That's the difference. So definite has boundaries. It's an area. Indefinite does not have boundaries. You're just going to put plus C at the end. Okay. So here we go. You need to come up with a function that if you took the derivative, you would get zero. Zero would be the answer. So C. C. Just C. But four is an example. No, you're not wrong. Four or seven or 12 or negative 62. But anyway, just a constant. All right, so look at number seven. You need to come up with a function that if you took the derivative, you would get negative three. Good, negative three X plus C. If you took the derivative of that, you would get negative three. All right, hold on. Now, this one, you need a function that if you did the derivative, you would get 5 as the answer. Good. 5x plus c. Now, here's the first one I'm throwing a variable in. So this one might take a little bit longer for you to think about. So think first, then answer. All right. For x, you need a function that if you did the derivative, you would just get x. Like x would be the answer. You would need to have an x squared. But if you did that derivative, you would get 2x. One half. One half x squared. Good. Plus, now how would you do the 10? 10? 10x and then plus c. So here's the rule. I wanted you to think through it before I actually just wrote it out. But what you do it, listen, you're going to add 1 to the power and divide by that number. It's the inverse of a power rule. Do you remember how for a power rule, you multiply and then you subtract the exponent? You multiply down and you subtract. Now you're gonna add and divide. This is how I made up your test questions. I did anti, I figured out what I wanted the answer to be. And then I did an anti-derivative. Do you remember seeing like a whole bunch of one half X squareds and things like that? Like that's how I made up your problems. Go ahead. Oh, so are we going to have to do it ever do it backwards on like quotient rules and like? Yes, but that is a totally separate topic that will be in a different unit all by itself. So yes, but not right now. And it's a totally separate thing. 
Okay. So look at this one. You have an X cubed. You need to add one to the power and then divide by that. You need a function that would give you X cubed as an answer for your derivative. One fourth X to the fourth plus C. Now look at this one. I would ignore the one third for just a second. Just pretend it's not even there. What would be your antiderivative for x to the fifth? One six. Okay, listen. One six x to the sixth. But then if you multiply that by a one third, a six times a third would be an eighteenth. Well, it's a one third. There's not a one half in this problem. It was one sixth times one third. And you can always check your answer by doing the derivative. Here, look it. If you were to do a power rule on this, if you bring the six down, what is six eighteenths? One third right there. And then you'd have X to the fifth. All right, look at number 12. You need a function that if you did the derivative, you would get three X squared. Good, X to the third plus 2x squared plus c. Good. And you can check it by doing the derivative. Now we're getting into the trig. You need a function that if you did the derivative, you would get sine. Think about it. It is negative cosine of x plus c. The reason it's negative is because the derivative of cosine is negative sine but we want it to be positive sign. All right, number 14, secant tangent. Which one of your trig functions has secant tangent as its derivative? Where? It's secant. Secant of x plus c. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. Which one of them had this as its derivative? But it will need to be mm -mm. Negative. negative cotangent of x plus c because the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Get back out those flashcards. Yeah. Oh, I love this one, though. If you were frustrated by that, here's where you catch a break. The derivative of e is e. So the antiderivative of e, e. is e. So the antiderivative of 15e to the x is 15e to the x. Plus C. Okay, so like, yeah, the trig is hard, but then you catch a break with E. All right, how about this one? Der uh, Antiderivative for X to the fourth. Good. Good. One fifth X to the fifth minus E to the X plus C. You guys are on top of that plus C. That's awesome. All right, I want to see if you get this one. You need a function that if you did the derivative, you would get... Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Now, one thing to add to that though, it's actually ln of absolute value of x. And here's the reason why. You can't ln a negative number. So when we go backwards, we put the absolute value in there to make sure that that result ends up being positive. I don't say ln absolute value every time because that's a mouthful. I just say ln of x. So you just need to know the absolute value. Of it. Now this one, this trips people up because of the three that's in there. You're allowed to take coefficients and bring them outside of the integral. So just take that one third and put it outside. It will look like that. And now it's practically the exact same thing you just did in number 18, just with a coefficient in front of it. So what's this answer gonna be? Yeah, one third ln of x, oops, plus c, it's good.